<laughs> What's your most exhilarating Pride experience? A little bit tomorrow. <laughs> I, I can't say we expected that answer, but that's uh, even more good then. Uh, Helen? I, I guess the first prize are very exhilarating uh, for most people, so the same was uh, the case for me uh, 10 years ago in Copenhagen. Um, I had never imagined uh, to see so many people, thousands of people, and even more than the people uh, that were uh, on the parade, I was amazed by the people who were cheering the parade, uh, were, um, just came to see the parade, and their happy faces and their supportive faces. And I didn't see any angry faces at that time. And I think that was one of the moments that made me uh, want to work uh, to make Estonia a better country. Thank you. And Kelly? Mm, I don't know. I, I can't answer your uh, question directly, but I have to say that uh, like, I think it was two months ago when we had a meeting at the Estonian LGBT Association about whether to have a pride here in Tallinn or not. And I remember that my position was not to have. All right. And, uh, and I was really like surprised that why do I want to have it because there will be so many aggressive people throwing rocks and stuff. And these like LGBT community people, they just convinced me like in 10 or 15 minutes that I've been so wrong and my position has been really stupid. And, uh, <laughs> and I was like totally changed in 15 minutes. Sweet. <laughs> that's, uh, that's really cool to hear. I'm, I'm, I'm happy you all got to actually answer that same question the first time. Was. But uh, now, uh, before we delve into the, you know, uh, some questions that we have prepared, I'd uh, like to give about five or seven minutes to each of you, just to introduce yourself and your organizations, what you stand for, uh, where, where will the organization actually go, um, so on and so forth. So, um, if you don't mind, let's go in the same backwards order that Kelly, perhaps, you can start. Thank you. So I can start why I was actually, I don't know, against this, such a, like a harsh word, but why I had my hesitations about uh, Pride or marching as such. I took part in uh, Venus Pride in 2010, and as it was mentioned already, it was quite a, uh, I don't know how much you participants uh, um, experienced this violence that was actually present. Uh, seven years ago in uh, Vilnius, but I took part of it as a, as a journalist. And so we got to see the really this demonstrating and very aggressive wrong crowd, because actually all the, all the LGBT community uh, members who were marching, they were somehow excluded in the field, but like we as the journalists, we got to see what, it, what was really like happening. And uh, the, I think there was around, uh, maybe around so somebody can uh, correct me, I think there were around like 5,000 very aggressive, very like radical protesters. They had really like horrible signs, they were shouting, they were like uh, throwing rocks at us and these bombs and stuff. And I was one of the people uh, from the, the like guests or journalists uh, group who also, uh, you know, that I, had, I had rocks. Uh, thrown at me and, uh, and that was very horrible uh, mm -hmm. like experience and uh, I, I think it's, it was the day when I actually turned into Sirke Sabe or uh, like a straight ally because mm -hmm. so far I didn't know that homophobia is actually, that it is like a, such a big problem and when I came back to Estonia I started to notice it everywhere. Before that, I was there were my like, very tolerant friends and my tolerant colleagues that I never thought about homophobia as such. Of course, I have like relatives who are homohenos. That's, of course, they are always there. But I started to notice it as a, like, a societal problem, like in the media, in like, talks with my, my like, best friends. And uh, I think that was the day that I thought that I, as a, as a Sirke Sõber, straight all ally should actually, you know, resist this horrible homophobia that is so uh, prevalent in Estonia. And uh, as time went by, I started to work for the Estonian Human Rights Centre. 
And what we do there actually is that how we try to uh, make the world a better place for Estonia, specifically for the LGBT community or Q community, is that we have a program called Strategic Litigation. And when you actually said uh, today, and that was very correctly put, that uh, we have this souvenir law called Registered Partnership Act, I would argue a little bit, I totally agree with you, but I would still like to argue a bit, is that I think we have already had uh, so many uh, great court success stories because there are families now in Estonia who have got to adopt only because of this law. I think there are around 20 families now in Estonia, I don't know the, the, the correct statistic, we have 20 families who have adopted only because of this law and because of our strategic litigation and because of efforts done by the Estonian LGBT Association. So this is one thing that we do at the Estonian Human Rights Centre. But I personally, with my uh, friends actually, do you remember, I, Estonians, I hope you remember, that uh, when this whole uh, controversy around the, the, the Registered Partnership Act started here in Estonia, and uh, we have this one great foundation, it's called Estonia Foundation for Defense of Tradition and Family, started their like, PR campaign heavily uh, funded by, I don't know who, but, mm -hmm. uh, and they started this uh, campaigning and rhetoric, it was always that it's like traditional family against LGBT family, that like the, the traditional family, so-called traditional family is the only right and correct family in Estonia, and I felt offended. Yeah. Offended. I've not offended every day because I, I, I've been married for many, many years. I have a son and, and they use like my family name all the time. And so uh, with my good friends across Estonia, we started a Facebook page called like that. I would translate it something like thank you, but my traditional family does not need your protection. And I think it was a success story because there were actually so many traditional <coughs> straight allies, traditional families. Uh, I hate this word actually. So-called traditional yeah, families. So <laughs> and like straight allies who actually wanted to, to, to do something. Yeah. And today we have more than 20,000 likes. And we are still operating this uh, Facebook page and we get enormous support all the time, likes, letters all the time. So what I want to say to you from a straight Dallas point of view is that uh, we are here for you. And there are many of us, not, not everybody is as bold as I am, or my, my friends, but uh, you're not alone. Thank you. Thank you. I, I personally have to uh, give a word of praise to that to the Facebook community as well, just like many in Estonia, I'm also a member of that, or following your, your post, and I think I think had in, in, in the area of social media, that has actually worked just divine. You keep doing what you're doing with that one, and, and, uh, and we'll, we'll follow you as well. Okay, thank you. Helen. I started working for the Estonian LGBT Association about 10 years ago, first as a board member, then as a <coughs> president for several years, um, now also a board member. And it's been a, it's, in a way, it's been a road of finding allies. We started out alone, uh, just as a group of uh, relatively young people uh, trying to do something uh, to, to make our lives better. Uh, to make the lives of uh, people around us a little better. Um, there were really few of us, actually. Uh, we had dreams uh, of, um, of starting uh, teacher trainings. We had dreams of organizing big conferences uh, where um, people would come up with new ideas to change uh, the world. Uh, we had dreams of uh, registered partnership law or um, marriage equality. Uh, we had dreams of, uh, of hundreds and thousands of uh, community members coming together and, uh, and um, being happy together. Uh, that was about 20, 10 years ago. Uh, and this, as I said, has been a road of, of finding allies. First allies from within our own community, um, and then finding allies uh, from outside the community. Because as a minority, um, you cannot really go very far uh, alone. Um, you have to uh, be with others as well. 
uh, when you think back in history, uh, and women's rights movement, um, the women's rights movement um, was at some point successful because they had allied allies as well. They need, uh, needed uh, allies from among uh, men. Uh, we have changes in parliaments, for instance, where no women at the time were present. Um, so as, as any minority uh, fighting for their equality, um, you have to uh, talk to others outside your minority to actually uh, get somewhere. Um, and in Estonia, then, in recent years, have brought several, several amazing uh, um, actions and, and moments where uh, people, anyone, straight, um, not straight, um, have come together to, to change things. Uh, Kelly already mentioned um, one uh, um, initiative uh, with a Facebook page. Um, also, when um, when the when we were working on uh, the Register of Partnership Act in 2014, uh, hoping it to be passed in the Parliament, uh, then um, uh, one of the things that was uh, was done was to have as many people and organisations to send their um, opinion on the law to the Parliament um, and. Tens and, and tens of uh, organizations did that. Uh, women's organizations, um, uh, health organizations, academic organizations, etc. And I suppose this is one of the laws where um, uh, the parliament reached the biggest number of, of opinions from uh, from the public. Um, also, when uh, there was the final uh, reading uh, of the law uh, in October in 2014. Then what some straight allies did, just out of personal initiative, uh, was that they started a campaign of collecting money uh, with donations uh, to buy flowers. And in the end, uh, people donated thousands and thousands of euros, and these, uh, um, these euros were spent to buy flowers. And so on that day, when the, on the last reading took place, uh, the parliament uh, was uh, in front of the parliament, there were thousands of flowers. And I think that's one of the most uh, or powerful images that I've seen uh, with our parliament and with uh, what people have done together uh, for changing uh, lives. Um, so what I've seen in my work the past 10 years is that uh, you may start out alone, but you don't get far alone. So it's all about uh, getting allies and doing things together. Thank you. I thought also that indeed that, that sea of flowers that was that day in front of the parliament, that was quite humbling to, to look at. Um, okay. Hi. Uh, I also received some flowers, although I wasn't at the, in the parliament at the time, I was a member of government, but. Uh, but so we really worked uh, quite hard to, to get it get this bill passed and, and uh, I think it was a unique moment actually uh, to, to get it passed in, in politics uh, I always say that there are um, openings of political possibility that come with, with different coalitions different different uh, moments in time where something is possible uh, that is only possible for the very limited uh, space of time and after that it is not. And it was in, in uh, April 2014 when uh, my party, the Social Democratic Party, entered the government and it was less than a year before general elections and there were intense debates in the party whether we should put that topic on the table or not because, you know, elections are coming and it's very difficult and so on. And in the end, we, we pushed it through and, and we put it on the table and we actually got this uh, bill passed with all its imperfect, uh, imperfections, but, but we got it passed. And I think it's, uh, it was the only time in the history of, of the Republic of Estonia that this bill could have passed. Not after the general elections in 2015 and not before that. So it was a historic moment in a sense that we actually managed to, to use that, seize that, that moment that uh, it was possible to, to get it passed. And later on, we of course had to deal with the consequences of the elections, but, but that's beside the point. So this, will, this will be a, a transient issue, uh, whereas the, the Act is, is clearly there, there to stay. Um, 
I personally have been have been uh, dealing with with uh, with minority rights and, and equal treatment of people throughout my whole political life. I entered politics in 2011, uh, mostly working on the integration issues of Russian speakers uh, here in Estonia. But of course, for me, uh, minority uh, rights issues are issues of equal treatment, regardless of, of who the minority is. And uh, and in Estonia. Um, uh, Clearly, the general sort of value system is uh, is, is post communist in itself. I mean, there's nothing to do about it. It's it's uh, it's, it's a historic baggage that we're carrying there, and, and of course we need to work on changing it. But but we also have to realize that the change happens very very slowly, <laughs> and through a lot of conflicts and a lot of um, um, uh, compromise also. Uh, only uh, because of uh, a, a huge and consorted effort of those who are willing to bring down change, because because the the forces that want to hold back are, are very strong and potent, mm -hmm. uh, not only politically but in, in general people are, are are very slow to change on on, on those issues. And uh, uh, despite the fact that many of us have, have at times felt. Uh, very pessimistic about the uh, possibility of, of, of real change in, 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 in the value system of Estonian society. The change is clearly happening. Uh, there is, a, a, of course, understandably a, 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 a conflict of generations on that specific issue and on many other, on many other uh, value issues here in the country. But uh, I think the, the history is moving in only one direction, and, and in this regard, of course, it's, uh, it's uh, well, I think we should remain positive. But also, uh, that doesn't mean that, that nothing should be done and that relapses are not possible. Relapses are very real if you look at what happens uh, around us uh, in countries much with, with much stronger traditions of, of, of uh, democracy and equal rights. Uh, and, and in this in this sense, I think it's it's uh, of utmost importance that that we we keep on uh, keep on uh, uh, holding this topic high on the agenda and and, and, and push uh, both the political uh, decision makers but also the society as a whole uh, forward with, with with that. And, and for, of course, speaking of, of, of political realm of, of these issues, then, then it's, it's, it's a clearly one of the most divisive issues in Estonian politics. And, and so for many, many of my uh, uh, colleagues in, in my party, and there are a couple in some other parties, uh, who are who are really who really believe in equal treatment and in LGBT rights? Even they mostly have uh, need convincing uh, of uh, of uh, how to do politics with conviction to do what you believe in and get elected. And it's it's a difficult one, I have to say. Now it's with, with the next phase of elections coming up, and it's uh, the debates are intense and. And the fear is, is quite real and understandable, you know. It's, uh, nobody wants to be a, a, a party that uh, does some really progressive, forward-looking things, but as a result of that, uh, ceases existing at the next polls. So it's, it's, uh, it's clearly a, a huge challenge uh, that perhaps not, is not always fully understood by, by those who are awaiting action. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I was pleased to add that we're very much looking up to you that as, an, as a straight ally you keep doing personally what to do and to also uh, as a member of the party and your party uh, likewise. Um,